There are thousands of MCP servers now. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I choose which MCP servers I'm gonna install, how I evaluate them, and when I decide to just build them myself. And then I'm gonna show you a cloud project that I built for evaluating MCP servers using other MCP servers. So stick around for that. If you've been following this channel, you know I've been covering MCP servers since they first came out. And the good news is, is that MCP servers have taken over. It is pretty much become the global standard, at least for now. Sam Altman mentioned that they're gonna add MCP support to ChatGPT desktop, to the Responses API, and it's already working for the new Agents SDK, so that's great. Sundar from Google, because we're on a first name basis, wrote to MCP or not to MCP? That is the question. So it's pretty clear that MCP is now industry standard, and this is great news for everyone because it's gonna be so much easier to connect LLMs, not just Claude, to external tools and external data sources, and it will just make LLM so much more powerful. Is this AGI? But this is a huge level up for all of us that are using LLMs on a daily basis. And if you watch any of my previous videos, you know there are tons of creative ways to integrate MCPs into your LLMs, into your workflows to get things done much faster. Sky really is the limit here. So this is great news for the entire AI community. The fact that they're coming together for the standard protocol is huge and we're just gonna see it get even better. Okay, so now that MCPs have taken over the world, everyone's talking about them, everyone's building them, everyone's using them. We kind of hit this new problem, not really a problem, just there's so many MCP servers. They're not only being created by companies, they're being created by individuals as well. And that's great. That is the nature of open source, which is awesome. But if you start searching for MCP servers that someone else built, you might realize there's five of them or six of them or 10 of them, and you don't really know which one to use. And there's multiple considerations here. When's the last time it's updated? Does it work? Is it being maintained? Is it trustworthy? And these are all things you have to take into consideration because you're essentially connecting your LLM to whatever external data source or external tool you wanna to give it access to. And those tools or those data sources could contain sensitive information or can perform actions that for the most part are good but sometimes could be destructive. So you really wanna know and really wanna check to make sure the MCB servers you're installing are legit and trustworthy. So now there are a bunch of different websites and repositories that aggregate all these MCP servers. We're just gonna look at them really quickly. The most famous one, I think I covered this a few months ago, is the Punk Pi Awesome MCP servers. And they even separated them into separate types, aggregators, art and culture, gaming, knowledge, memory. There's so many here, right? And you could look for one. So let's look for WhatsApp, for example. Okay, so there's five matches, but I see three separate servers, which two of them look like they're the same exact one. And here's another one. So the question is, which one can I use? Now, there are other websites like Pulse MCP, which also aggregates MCP servers, which are pretty much the same ones you'll see on these GitHub. Because if you click into it, you can just click back to the GitHub repo. So this gives us some information. This one has 771,000 downloads, 29,000 stars. That's a good indication. Smithery is another really good one. And what I like about Smithery is they kind of do the installation process for you by giving you a command to put through terminal and you don't have to worry about adding it all to your JSON config. But then again, in this situation, you're giving more credentials to another third party, Smithery. You can see this is a local one, this is a remote, this has 227,000 uses. Then you have Composio, which also now has managed MCP servers, which is great. They have the probably the nicest UI out of all of them. And I'm gonna be honest, I actually tried to install one via Composio. The installation worked, but then the server didn't work as expected. So I uninstalled it and decided, you know what? I'm just gonna build one myself. And then you have Glamma. And Glamma is really cool because what Glamma does is they have these letter ratings here for security and license and quality and they explain to you what they are. A indicates the server does not have known vulnerabilities. F indicates the server has known security vulnerabilities. So the bottom line is you have this growing list of MCP servers and they're aggregated in all these different websites and it's up to you to really decide is this one safe? Is this one maintained? Is, is this one gonna do what I want it to do? Is this one a risk in any way? And it takes time to research and figure out, do I wanna install this MCP server? And I'll explain to you my methodology and how I would evaluate an MCP server. Is first, I would go into any server, for example, I'd look at its GitHub page, and I would look at things like, okay, when was the last time there was a commit? 15 hours ago. There's 124 commits. This is a maintained server. I'll look at how many stars, how many forks, how many issues, how many pull requests? And not one of these things would give me an answer, but these are more data points to understand what the situation is. Another thing I would do is I would look at the author. Graphlet is a company, so a little bit more trustworthy. Not that companies can't mess up or make malicious code, but that was my first step. The next thing that I would do is I would git clone it in cursor or Claude code, and then I would prompt, look at the code here, See if there's any security flaws, see if it's making any calls that it shouldn't, see if it's saving any data that it shouldn't. And then the last thing that I would do is I would look on Reddit, 
and Twitter, and I would search these specific MCB servers to see what people are saying about them, seeing if they worked, seeing if they found anything weird about it. And this is a tedious process, but it's necessary because again, you're giving these amazing tools the ability to use other tools and do things on your behalf. So you want to make sure that it's kosher. You want to make sure that it's not going to mess anything up. So I implore you to do your research before installing any MCP server because you don't want to find out too late that it did something you didn't want it to, that it exposed something or shared something you didn't want to. And by the way, this could happen for multiple reasons. It could happen for malicious intent, someone created an MCP server to steal data, or it could be from someone that just was vibe coding or doesn't have experience and just built an MCP server that did what they wanted it to do, but didn't think about the ramifications of storing something in plain text. And again, this is all at your own discretion. You may be more risk adverse. You may not have sensitive information. You may not worry about what you're connecting it to, but I believe as MCP progresses, we're gonna have to be more and more careful. So eventually what I ended up doing was building a cloud project with prompt chaining that uses various MCP servers to evaluate an MCP via its GitHub, do the various searches that I was doing manually, and then give me a risk assessment. I'm gonna show that to you right now. So this is something I've been iterating on for a few weeks now, and it's only getting better. Now I've also used this in Claude code in a bit of a different format, and I love Claude code, but it gets really expensive. And for that matter, I prefer to use Claude desktop when I can, and I think it works pretty good. So this is MCP Evaluator V3. So let's do this. Let's take this MCP server. This is one I think is really cool. It's called Apple MCP. What it does is pretty much allows you to connect Claude or whatever client to your computer and do all these great things like send messages, edit notes, look at contacts, send emails, reminders. They're still working on the calendar and photos and music. It's really cool. It's really powerful. It's also risky because you're giving it access to your whole computer. And you see here, there's 827 stars, 55 forks, there's a pull request. So people are using their server. I'm pretty confident it's good, but let's, let's evaluate it. So we took the URL, let's just paste it in here and let's go. So I'll help you evaluate the security, privacy, and re reliability of this Apple MCP server. Let me analyze it step by step and provide you with a comprehensive assessment. So it's going to create a directory on the file system for the server and it's going to create a document within it where it goes through everything. So we're going to press allow. It looks at the file context from the GitHub MCP. What it's doing is it's looking through the code. And while this process is imperfect, it does give us a good understanding of what's actually going on here. So I'm just going to let this run because it's going to take a while. And I'm going to come back to you at the end. I'm going to show you the output. I'm going to show you the file. Okay, so finish. We're just going to look at the steps really quickly. So what it does first is it creates a directory. It writes a file, which we'll look at later. Then what it does is it uses the GitHub MCP to retrieve and pretty much look at the contents of the repository, look at all the code. The first thing I have it do is I have it look at the readme file to understand what it's supposed to do, what it claims it's going to do. And I have it look at all the other files within the code to pretty much understand how it works. So it says, let me look at the main file. Now I'll look at the repository metadata. Then it looks into the commit history to understand the development patterns. After looking at the code, what I have it do is then I have a look at the community. So it looks at community feedback, it uses Brave Search, it searches Reddit, searches various different social media websites to understand if has anyone talked about this. Then I have a look for other MCP servers that have similar functionality to see maybe there's a better one. Then it updates all that to the assessment file. So let's just look at this briefly. Summary of Apple MCP server evaluation. The Apple MCP server is well-structured integration between Claude and Apple's native macOS applications. Key findings, security 80 out of 100. Server implements good security practices with TypeScript for type safety, input validation, error handling. However, it requires broad system permissions, including full disk access which is an inherent security consideration. Privacy. The server operates entirely locally on, on the user's machine with no data transmitted to external servers. It doesn't persistently store sensitive data, though it does access personal information from Apple applications. This MCP server is recommended for users who want to extend Claude's capabilities to interact with Apple's native applications with the understanding that it requires broad system access to function. And yes, we knew that, but now we did some deeper research on it. Now let's just look at the file really quickly. Okay, so here's the security assessment file I had to make in the directory MCP security evaluation, Apple MCP. So if we open it up, we can see it's much more detailed than what we just saw from Claude. It talks about the server purpose, expected functionality, alternative MCP servers. It then it goes into the code analysis, gives code examples. 
It really looks through everything. Suspicious behaviors. Scheduled message storage, low risk. Web search implementation, low risk. Access to messages database, medium risk. Then it goes into community feedback, because remember we had to search the internet. Thought on Smithery, Glamma, Pulse MCP. It's not mentioned in awesome MCP servers. So it really did the work. It really did the research that I was gonna do manually by itself. At the bottom, it has a security evaluation. Keep going down. This is really cool. Final verdict, the Apple MCP server by Ravia is well implemented and then key recommendations, only grant permission to the specific applications you intend to use with Claude. Be mindful of sensitivity. Remember that the server has access to your messages, emails, contacts, so use it appropriately. So what we saw here is that it does all the research for us. And I've used this and found servers that were not good, were not safe, that were making mistakes, that were storing things in plain text. And that may be fine for you, but I think it's really important to really understand what you're putting on your computer, what you're giving access to, to third parties and to LLMs, which for the most part do exactly what we want, but we know that they also hallucinate. So I'll put the custom instructions for this cloud project in my GitHub repository. The MCP servers you need installed are fetch, brave search, GitHub, and file system. So let's say you're evaluating a server and it looks pretty good, 90%, let's say, but there's something you want to work on. The great news is you could just put it into cursor or Claude code or windsurf and work on it and iterate it to fix it yourself. Or you could just build your own MCP server and it's really easy to do. Depends on what you're trying to build, but more or less, it's pretty easy to do. If enough people are interested, I'll show you how I build MCP servers. The bottom line is I love MCP. I think it's so cool. I think we have definitely leveled up. I just think we need to use them with caution and as it becomes more widely adopted, it just opens the door for malicious actors or people to make mistakes and then potentially put your data or you at risk in some way. So all I'm saying is be careful. Hopefully in the future, we're gonna have a more standardized way of monitoring and checking these MCP servers. For now, I think this is good enough. And let me know how you're evaluating MCP servers, how you choose which ones to put on your computer or build yourself. So if you found this video helpful, or insightful or you learned something, please give it a like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. Thank you for watching and have a great day.